Our buy rounds haven't been the greatest this season, but last week we scored the perfect round, going 5 from 5 with tips and margins. The bakery, however, or our try scorers, we only got a 1 from 5. But yeah, pretty stoked of the results. Speaking of, let's go through the results. So it was a 13 plus for the Sharks. I think the whole of the rugby league community were on the Sharkies. Raiders 1 to 12, they looked like they were on the road to their first bloody 13 plus, but it ended up being a close game. The Warriors, we backed the big bounce back after that disappointing performance back at home. And 1 to 12 for both the Bulldogs and the Dolphins. The Finns, that game could have went either way. But yeah, it's another shortened week. Actually, not really. We've got seven NRL matches and we have the States of Origin later today. So eight games all up. It's a regular weekend of footy. So for the first match of the round, Friday Night Footy, the Newcastle Knights host the West Tigers, and in terms of ins and outs, starting with the away team, it's the return of their most influential player this season, their new recruit to their skipper, Apisai Kuroiso. He's back from that broken draw, that pushes Jake Simpkin to the bench, Alex Twiles back from his suspension, and they push out youngsters Altussi James and Talon De Silva. A couple notables in reserves, we've got Brent Naden and Dane Laurie at 18th man. For the home side, the Knights. Veteran Dane Gagai makes his return from his foot injury. That forces Inari Tuwala out of the squad. They've also got listed their New South Wales players in Bradman Best and Jacob Saifiti. As for my pick, Newcastle and Newcastle. It's hard to pass up, although I will say the return of Api Saikoroisa obviously kind of spices things up. That and the Tigers' performance last week, even though in the even though in the end they got pumped, they showed positive signs. I mean, they've been showing positive signs throughout the season. But yeah, like I said. The Knights at Newcastle, they typically turn up for their home fans. Um, KP's in, I won't say career best form, but he's in some pretty decent form at the moment. Pre-teamless Tuesday, I had the Knights by 13+, plus, but we're going to go ahead and rock off the Knights in a close one, 1-12. One to 12. And the second game of the week, the first of a triple header on Saturday, sees the Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs take on my team, the Brisbane Broncos. In terms of ins and outs, the Broncos have their origin players backing up at scattered in reserves, so we could see them back up. For the home side, Josh Adokar looks like he's backing up. Not for the man who covered for him last week, Blake Wilson. He stays on the wing, and Jacob Karaz moves into the centers. As for the outs, Ethan Kwai Ward, neck injury. Ryan Sutton, his spots at prop will be taken by Raymond Faitala Mariner. Corey Waddell moving to the 13. Now as for my pick, I do think it's a pretty cut and dry match. For as good as their position is on the ladder, the Broncos, they're still yet to deliver that perfect game if you will. That full performance, you know? I'm just hoping to see something close to that. It should be a cruisy game, but crazier things have happened. Give me the Broncos, give me 13+. plus. Third game of the week, the Manly Moringa Seagulls host the North Queensland Cowboys. This one, a bit of a doozy here at Four Pines Park. In terms of ins and outs, start off the home side. Skipper DCE and Jerbo have been named to back up, but take that with a grain of salt. Other ins, they got a potential debutante in Dean Madison on the bench. He'll be taking over Ben Trebojevic, who suffered another hammy strain. For the Cowboys, much like the Seagulls, all their origin players will be Expected to back up Val Holmes, Taulangi, Adnanai, even Robbo and Cotter. I mean, they can't afford to drop any more games, so you could expect them to back up if there's no force changes. As for my pick, I'm on the fence for the moment. I do like Manly and Manly, but the Cowboys, bit of a love hate relationship with the Cowboys. Every time I write them off, they always prove me wrong. Looking at their previous meetings, Manly have beat them twice and lead in the overall head to head 18 to 14. We're going to go against the grain in this. I'm going to back the Cowboys to keep their momentum going. Currently four from their last five. Gee, but I like Manly in Manly. We'll stick with our gut on this one. We'll take the Cowboys on the road and we'll go by one to 12 points. The main events for Saturday night, we have the Sydney Roosters hosting the Melbourne Storm. This being played at Sydney Cricket Ground, or the Sydney Cricket Ground. And to announce the Roosters, they welcome back plenty. First of all, Brandon Smith makes his return. It's been a minute. On the bench, Jake Turpin will be starting. Egan Butcher's also back on the bench. As are Billy Smith and Joey Suwa'ali. Joey back on the bloody wing where he should have been all those previous, uh, those previous weeks he was playing in the centres. They also have their origin boys backing up in Tedesco and Collins. For the away side, they got Walbrook on the wing, Harry Grant, Xavier Coates, and Cam Munster also named to back up as well. And my pick, yeah, the Roosters. My thoughts and opinions hasn't changed much like their playstyle. They still look unorganized and just out of sync. We thought they'd kick on close to or just beyond the midpoint of the season and they just haven't clicked. Mind you, they haven't really fielded a full strength squad regularly, I guess. You could say that plays a factor, but then again, 
They've had their chief playmaker in Luke Keery, who has been a little up and down in terms of form himself, along with their skipper. Do I think they can flip a switch against the Melbourne side that's been a little up and down themselves, but they've kind of found their flow before running into the best team in the league in the Panthers the last time they played? I'm going to say there's definitely potential there. I'm actually going to go ahead and stick my neck out for the Roosters and take them this week. Not really confident in the pick, but I do remember the last time Melbourne's Origin Stars backed up, they looked a little, I guess, out of sorts. So yeah, give me the Roosters, give me 1-12 to 12 points. And the games get trickier, the first for Sunday we have the New Zealand Warriors versus the Cronulla Sharks. In terms of ins and outs, starting with the home side here, apparently Sean Johnson in the 7 is uncertain again this week. And also Dylan Walker has been named despite suffering an arm injury against the Bunnies last week. Josh Curran returns after serving a two game suspension, so that forces Mitch Barnett back into the front row, where I prefer him to be honest, and Bunty R4 drops out of the squad. Uh, for the away team, no changes, although they do have the big man, Braden Hamlin Welle, named in reserves, so keep an eye out for that. My pick for this game, such a crucial game when it comes to both teams, finding out where exactly they fit on the totem pole in terms of their presence in the league. Are they contenders or pretenders? They're kind of similar in a way when it comes to like lesser teams, they've disposed of them quite comfortably but haven't quite got the wins over the more tougher competition. Although for the Warriors I will say that in their losses to the top teams, they've actually held their own. I guess that's where the two teams differ. Stylistically this new look Warriors system is built around a gritty defense which is a great foundation for any team to be honest. We saw it with the Cowboys last year, I mean. Penrith are the best example, just absolutely pummeling teams for these last three seasons. Um, the last time these two teams met was back at Shark Park. The Warriors pulled off a monumental comeback after trailing, I think it was 14 or 12 points at the break. They came back to win it 32 points to 30. In the wet, I remember, Sean Johnson with an all-time post-match reaction as well. That was good stuff. If you haven't seen it, check it out. And yeah, the Sharks are looking to get it back in blood. Do I think they can? It's tough to gauge. Like I said, they're in a similar position, but stylistically, it's a great matchup. The flashiness of the Sharks versus the grits of the Warriors. I want to back the home team to get it done, especially after their last outing at Go Media, where they were, I'd say, pretty embarrassing. We'll take them in another close one, 1-12 to 12 points. Speaking of a gritty defense, the second game for Sunday sees the Redcliffe Dolphins taking on the Penrith Panthers, this being played at KO Stadium. In terms of ins and outs, for the Finns, Felice Galfusi, he's back from his concussion, but they're pushing Kenny Bromwich back into the front row. Nichols goes to the bench and Josh Kerr falls out of the squad. They've also got the hammer to back up. In the centers, with uh, Cody, Cody keeping that fullback spot. Only Uncle Wayne, I swear. For the Panthers, it's looking like they'll be full strength. They've even got Nathan Cleary named in reserves as well. As for my pick, Grit vs Grit. But for Penrith, it's next level Grit. We like to say that they tackle teams into submission. I think we can expect that against this Dolphins side. Their performance last week against the Storm, who dominated for like the first 20 minutes. They came back in the second and just blew them off the park. I'm struggling on seeing a path to victory for the Dolphins, who have been looking a little lethargic these last couple of weeks. A little bit of wear and tear, if you will. But yeah, I'm taking Panthers. I think with or without Cleary, they get the job done. Give me Penrith on the road. Give me 13 plus. A pretty decent game. To end things off, we got the Parramatta Eels hosting the Gold Coast Titans. I might take the Titans in this side, uh, looking at their ins and outs, starting with Parramatta. I do reckon Gutho and Moses will back up. They got them named here, as well as uh, Campbell Gillard. Uh, looking at the squad, it's pretty much full strength, or about as full strength as you can get. No outs for the Titans. They got AJ backing up. They also got Mo for Duaika, Tino for Asu Malayawi, and Dave for Fita backing up. It being the last game, You'd expect those boys to back up, unless they pick up an injury or something. Let me knock on wood for you Titans fans later tonight. But yeah, my pick for this game. Let's take a look at the history between the two, see if it could sway us. Because I'm on the fence at the moment, and the head-to-head, -head, the overall, it's actually split down the middle, 12 wins apiece. And the last time these two teams met, the Titans got the nod 26 to 24. Prior to that, it was the Eels 26 to 20. The form guide heading in, a super depleted Eels. Losing to the Warriors last week make them four from five. And the Titans are two from five. I kind of want to fancy an upset, but a full strength Parramatta at Parramatta, that's hard to pass up. So we're going to take another favorite. It's a bloody box of faves this week. At least I think it is. Give me the Eels. Give me one to 12. 
And real quick, lastly, before we get to the summary, our predictions for the state of origin. We'll keep it super short and sweet. Being a supporter of Queensland, we'll obviously be tipping the Queenslanders to get the sweep. It's hashtag sweep season, baby. Well, at least I hope it is. And we'll go by one to 12 points for the bakery. One from each side, we'll go with the man on debut for the Blues, Bradman Best. And for the Maroons, we're going to go with, I was going to go with another outside back, but we'll go with something out of the ordinary, Harry Grant. And our player for the series will be Ruben Cotter. And a quick wrap on the NRL action, we got the Knights 1-12, the Broncos 13+, the Cowboys 1-12, the Storm 1-12, the Warriors 1-12, the Panthers 13+, and the Parramatta Eels at home 1-12 points. As always, if you have any predictions of your own, drop it in the comment section down below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to run straight to that like button. Thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you. Later.